a few months wow that was a great start a few months ago i created something called unity mcp and it was really like when this mcp craze was happening and everyone was super super into how can ai clients like cloud desktop or cursor or any of the numerous ones that are out there now how can they actually talk to applications or different software and there was a really really popular one that i saw that was blender mcp and that inspired me to make one for unity because i just saw someone type in build xyz and it like built out this whole thing in blender it was super super cool and so i built one for unity and so really the the idea here is it's kind of like an API, I guess, where you can hook up your cloud desktop or cursor and it will talk directly to the Unity application that you have up and running on your computer. And this is all open source totally for free too. Uh, well, you have to pay for like the cloud you know, license or the cursor uh, subscription, but uh, we don't charge for this one. Um, and the idea here is you can type in, build me a Mario game or build me a tic-tac-toe game or it, like simple stuff like, hey, can you add extra gravity or just like you know little stuff like that that you may or may not know how to do off the top of your head or it'll help you prototype it a lot better. And so I went through and I built something uh, to help do that. And it's kind of been refined over the last uh, several months. Um, we've got over 17, or we have exactly 17 contributors. Uh, and uh, it's honestly super easy to get set up now. And so I'm just going to walk through how it works and kind of give you a little demo and uh, hopefully inspire you to give it a shot. Use it in your next game jam uh, and see if it's helpful. Uh, so the idea here is there is a Python server that's just kind of running and listening in the background, and it will talk between Unity and your client of choice. And so you need to have Python downloaded on your computer, which is really easy. You just click this link and um, you know, click on the download link and it'll install it. Um, you need to have Unity, obviously. Uh, and then you also need something called UV, um, which is just a, a package manager for Python. And so you just um, drop this script in if you're using Mac or Linux, and then drop this script in uh, to your terminal and enter if you're using um, Windows on PowerShell. And then all you have to do is copy this link right here, and then we go to Unity. And this is a brand new Unity 3D URP project that I just started. I uh, still got the readme assets in here that I can remove. So we're going to go to the package manager, hit the plus icon and add in, install package from git URL, paste in the, uh, the URL that I just copied. Make sure, so it's not, the, the one thing that like gets people hung up sometimes is it's not this URL up here at the top. It uh, includes some extra this question mark path unity bridge because this project actually has a few different um, it has the bridge and then it also has some test and then it has the uh, the Python project in there and they actually download separately so uh, just keeping note uh, it's important to have the the whole path so we're in here we go plus install package via git URL I'll paste that in there oh it went away Paste that in there, hit enter, and then it should download the package, the MCP for Unity, and then it should also, behind the scenes, download the Python server. And once that installs, I can show you where to uh, find it and configure it. There we go. And you should see some logs that pop up and it says it's installing the Python server. It successfully installed the Python server. And now we can go to window and then MCP for Unity. Click on that. And it'll pop up this uh, little window here. Let me resize it so it looks nice. And so you get a, a couple different um, little boxes here and so this is your server status so it makes sure that your server is actually installed and if you get an error in here you either don't have python installed in your computer it's not up to date or you don't have uv installed in your computer um, and so you can actually um, usually click on something and it'll either download it or auto install it or something uh, and then that's what we call the the unity bridge it's the um and so the bridge listens to the Python server and the Python server talks to uh, a, a client. 
uh, and then the MCP configuration, and this will automatically set up. So usually you have to copy and paste a, a script and put it in the exact right spot for it to be able to recognize um, that this is all working. And we've gone through and just set it up so it's super easy. So I use cursor by default, and so I just click auto configure, and it automatically takes the script that I need and drops it where it needs to be on my computer. Um, you can also manually install it, and so if you click on this, it will give you the script you actually need to copy and actually tell you where it needs to go to. So you can either just open it right there, copy and paste this right into that spot. And if you have other MCP servers, it shouldn't necessarily conflict, which is nice. And then you can also um, tell the, the AI, like how strict should we be with syntax and Unity's uh, best practices and that kind of stuff. So you can be super strict or uh, just like really basic. So if everything's green, you should be good to go. And so we have this basic, you know, nothing seen, and then we're gonna open up cursor. And then I'm gonna open up cursor in a brand new in my in my project, so I'm opening up cursor in my Unity project. We can actually go to settings. We'll go to MCP, and you should see Unity MCP already connected and the tools that you have available to you. And so you can actually um, edit this configuration directly too. It'll take you right to the the spot where you would copy and paste it as well. So uh, if you see that green and everything's good you should be good to go and you can just type in build me a let's do a build me a simple 2d platformer game and then we're gonna make sure we use 3d objects uh, just so it doesn't try to add in like sprites and stuff it, it might get confused and then uh, build just one level and then we'll hook up and it's going to think and then you should see it doing tool calls so first it's going to create a to-do list and this is actually going to behave differently depending on what client you're using and so for cursor it goes through and creates a to-do list and then here you see it is um, calling tools and then you see this drop down here so by default it's ask every time or use allow list. So you actually have to press enter every single time. This is specific to cursor. Um, and then I've just swapped it over to run everything. So it will just automatically call the, the correct calls. And so you see it's calling manage scene, it's calling manage the editor, uh, and then manage scene a few more times. It called manage game object, which it was creating a game object here. You can actually click in and like see all the, the data and stuff. Uh, and then when you swap over to Unity, you can see it's actually building out stuff. And so it's, it's created this little floor here and you can see it actually create the platforms and it's creating, I guess this is gonna be the character. Oh, no, that's the goal. We're looking, we're looking at it backwards. We'll flip around the other side. So that's the goal we have to get to. And then it should, after it sets the scene up, it should automatically create some scripts and um, set all that up. So yeah, th th this will pop up, um, just say, yes, you can update all the scripts that you find and everything like that. And so it's creating a script. It'll reload the domain a bunch of times because it's Unity. <laughs> and then we just kind of let it run. Go back and check on it still going it is good to have the unlimited plans or at least the more higher end plans so if you try to run this on like the free plan of cursor or the free plan of cloud desktop uh, you're going to run into the limits pretty quickly because you can see how how many tools it's called how much context it's using each tool uses up like all of this amount of data and so you're you're probably going to run into your context limits there pretty quickly and then there we go, it says it is done and it's created a little platform. It gave us a little blurb about how to play. It says, here's the scripts that it created. And so we can go over to Unity and let's just double check its work. Oh, it even created a material. So there's a new material for the goal. And then it's got a platform material, player material. There is, it said it created some scripts, but I don't see any scripts. 
Oh, it, so it created an extra assets folder and then there's scripts inside the assets folder. So sometimes it gets a little weird. Uh, I've, I've honestly filmed this a couple times and we're just going to go with whatever this uh, shows up because it's a little finicky. I will say that it's not going to, you're not going to be able to give it one prompt and have it build out something really amazing. It's really good for prototyping. So like this is really quick. It set up a really quick platformer. Uh, one thing I will note is that it doesn't do very well at like actually placing scripts. This one actually did good. So it actually placed the script onto the object, but you like kind of references. So like the ground check here is um, sometimes it doesn't actually specify that. Um, see the main camera does have it. And then, so yeah, see the, the target hasn't been set. And so we're not actually following anything. So if we want to actually follow our player, we need to uh, drag and drop our player over there. And then, and then let's look at the goal, make sure the goal has a script. Cool. And let's hit play and see what happens. Um, okay. Here's an error that is also very common. It is the input system. And so the way AI is trained, it's, it's, it's usually out of date. And so usually what you'll get is the input system is going to be configured to be the old input system instead of the new input system that unity is trying to like kind of force. And so we're going to go to project settings here expand that out, go to player, other settings, and then scroll down until we get to this active input handling underneath configuration. And we're gonna swap that to both. Uh, so Unity in, the, in their new like 6.0 and stuff, uh, it's they're trying to push their new input system. And we don't wanna use that. We wanna use the, the old one for now because it's just honestly a lot simpler. If you're building out a production game with all the production stuff, I would use the the new input system because it's more configurable. You can uh, do keybinds and that kind of stuff. But uh, for just demos and prototypes, use the old input system. It's so much easier. <laughs> so we'll let Unity come back up and restart, and uh, we'll try it again. And while Unity's restarting, I just want to encourage you to contribute if you want. Uh, oh, here's Unity. Let me put it back on the right screen there. If you want to contribute to the project, um, there's another uh, branch that I've been working on lately. Uh, if you want to contribute, we've got over 3,000 people who have started this project, a bunch of forks, and there's a bunch of people using this every day. We've got some optional anonymous telemetry attached to this uh, that you can opt out of with just one, um, one little environment variable. Let me find it. There is, where is it? I can't find it off the top of my head, <laughs> but if you want to opt out of telemetry, you just literally go to the environment variable, swap it to false. Um, and, but it's anonymous and it lets us see how many daily users are, there are, how many uh, actual commands or tools are being used, where the errors are, that kind of stuff. And um, it's being, this whole project being managed by Coplay as well, um, I should, also say that they, uh, it, I ended up transferring the project over to them to manage. Um, they, uh, they purchased it from me, um, uh, full disclosure, and I helped them out and um, work for them a little bit on the on a contract basis to actually improve Unity MCP and make these videos and stuff. So um, that's a little disclaimer I'll throw in here too. But I, I'm the one who built this and I enjoy using it and I, I still think it's a, a great tool. So. Back to Unity. So let's try this again. Now that Unity's restarted, we swap the input mode over. So if I do left and right, there we go. And then spacebar, we got a little jump there. So now we are, it works. So let's see what happens when we get to the goal. Level complete, nice, there we go. So we didn't add, we, don't, we didn't write any scripts. We did one little config where we, on the main camera, we drag and dropped the, actually we didn't, um, because I forgot to save. So this is automatic, in the script here, it automatically finds the player, so nice. Um, I thought that was gonna be the one thing we had to do, but we didn't have to do anything. It even went through and made some materials for us. Uh, and so there's a few like little weird things, like it created the assets folder instead of a scripts folder, so you could rename this. But as far as like prototyping goes, like that took us three minutes and it created three scripts for us and we have a whole working platformer level and now you can go in here and move stuff around and create more levels um, so 
I highly encourage you to play around with this, do other stuff, see see what it can do, uh, find the limitations, because there definitely are limitations, but uh, play around with it. It's a really fun tool, and it's really easy to configure, and it's all set up for a bunch of different clients. So if you don't use Cursor, you can use one of the many other. We've got Cloud Code, Windsurf, Cloud Desktop, uh, VS Code, uh, the GitHub Copilot, and then also Kiro uh, are automatically set up for it, but it should work with any MCP client. So you can do the manual setup here and just copy this and it will um, be set up for anything that you want to use. So enjoy uh, and let me know in the comments if you actually build something cool with it or if you have suggestions. Um, feel free to write your suggestions in the uh, issues, create an issue, uh, and we'll you know get to it. We're actually working on this pretty frequently. Um, let's see if we can see the last last time. Um, yeah, three days ago was the latest update, and we're updating it last week, um, which was three days ago, <laughs> three or four days ago. So we're updating things pretty frequently. We're, we're pretty active on this project. So um, let me know suggestions that you have, and uh, I'm excited to see what you can end up building.